Hi, welcome to chapter nine. Let's look at the basics of meiosis. So let me just review for a second. Our last slide uh, show that we looked at was mitosis. That's where we have uh, 46 chromosomes, we copy to 92, and then we split to 46 and 46. We have identical cells, and they're identical to the original cell. With meiosis, the plan is a little bit different. We're going to have 46, we're going to copy to 92, we're going to split to 46 and 46. So far it looks pretty similar, right? But then we have a second division where we're going to split each of these cells into 23, 23, 23, and 23. So you can see how these first two first two sets are very similar. So mitosis, and they call this meiosis 1, are very similar. But the end goal is to start off diploid, if we remember that word, and we're going to end up haploid. So we end up with half when we started with two of everything. First they show you this karyotype, just so we can look at the chromosomes a little bit better and go over some of these words again. So remember that, okay, this is, they're showing you chromosome number five. So this is all four of these, there's one, two, three, four, all four of these are chromosome five. This one came from dad, we'll say, and this one came from mom, and they have both copied themselves, right? In the middle, we have a centromere. These are called sister chromatids. So these two are sister chromatids. These two are sister chromatids. Homologous pair is all four. Sometimes you'll see the word with homologous chromosomes, they'll say non sister chromatids. What are they saying? These two are sisters, and these two are sisters, meaning identical, almost. These are not the same. The chromosome you get from dad is not the same as the chromosome you get from mom. When you look at this karyotype, you can see, we said humans have 46 chromosomes, right? You can see 1 through 22 and they call those autosomes. And then we have our sex chromosomes. X is for female, Y is for male. So females are XX and males are XY. And this is pretty, right? This is all done by computer and computer programming where you used to have to do it by hand. You would look at the cells underneath a microscope, everything was in black and white, and you would try to figure out which chromosomes, based on some of these banding patterns, which chromosome was which, and you would line, cut them out and line them up. Now we have computer programs that do all this for us. Okay, so here you can see meiosis 1 and meiosis 2. So there are two divisions. We're going to go from 46, so from one cell that has 46, to four cells that have 23 each. So you can see four chromosomes here. Now you can see the chromosomes have duplicated themselves. So now we have eight. Then they split, so we have four and four. And then we have two, 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 and two. They want to talk a little bit about crossing over before we talk about prophase. So this happens in prophase one of meiosis one. You do need to be specific uh, talking about prophase one versus prophase two in meiosis because there are two divisions, right? So you have to be very specific, especially on test answers. Well, this is a very um, important event that occurs, and they call this a crossing over, or sometimes they'll call it a synapse. But you can see these chromosomes are touching in this area, and they actually swap genetic information. So let's say this was dad, and this was mom, and now we have a mix. So this chromosome, these were all the same chromosome. They were all, let's say, chromosome 5 since we're working with that. So all of these were chromosome 5. So this one is just like dad, 
This one is just like mom. This one has dad and mom. And this one has dad and mom. Now remember, these four items are going to go on to be fertilized, whether they're egg or sperm. So I'll show you a picture again in just a second, but what you should get from this is, why can you have four brothers and sisters, including yourself, and you all look completely different? One of you looks just like dad, one looks just like mom, one's got mom's hands, but dad's face, the other has mom's face, but dad's height or body type. So this is this crossing over event allows for genetic diversity and, and all the various uh, chromosome and gene possibilities that we have. So they call this um, crossing over. We're going to talk about independent assortment in just a second. But I wanted you to look at this number right here. This is trillion. There are 70 trillion possibilities when we talk about fertilization, and fertilization is when we take an egg and a sperm and we put them together, right? So 70 trillion possibilities, different genetic possibilities. So let's talk about, so since we're here, let's talk about genetic diversity. So the item that I just talked about was crossing over. They don't show it necessarily here in this picture, but we'll talk about it right here. So there's crossing over where we exchange pieces of DNA. Then there's something called random alignment. You don't know how the chromosomes are going to line up. Do you see how moms are on this side and dads are on this side? Well, they don't have parking spaces. They don't always line up the same way. So now you can see in this cell that's lining up, there's one dad and one mom and one dad and one mom. So they're not lined up the same. This random alignment is what they were talking about when they said independent assortment. So independent assortment. All right, now what's going to happen? These, chromosome, these chromosomes are going to split. So these two are going to go to one side, these two are going to go to the other side, these two, these two. Now what's going to happen, these guys are going to split again, and we're going to get these haploid, and they're either going to be egg or sperm. So we never know which combination of egg and sperm are going to come together. So they'll talk about the three ways that we have genetic diversity. One, there's that crossing over event where we exchange pieces of DNA. Two, there's independent assortment where we never know how the chromosomes are going to line up before they get split. And then we have during fertilization, we never know which egg and sperm are going to come together. That's what gives us, those three events give us 70 trillion different outcomes to fertilization. So let's look at meiosis one. Again, we have the same phases, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and you'll see telophase. And instead of cytokinesis, we now have interkinesis. You also see that there's ones. Remember, this is meiosis one, so you have to say one. If you don't tell me, if you just say, if I ask a test question, um, during meiosis one, chromosomes have, which phase have the chromosomes duplicated and the crossing over event occurs? If you just write prophase, it's wrong. Because prophase for meiosis could be prophase one or two. So during prophase one is when the chromosomes have duplicated, the homologous pairs synapse and crossing over occurs. Remember homologous pairs when you have four of the same chromosome. These were the sister chromatids and then these were the homologs. Metaphase, we're going to see, so you can see here the crossing over event has occurred. The chromosomes are going to line up in the middle. Now remember these are called homologs, so it says the homologs line up. Then the homologs are separated pulled to the side. Now the spindles disappear, the nuclear envelope reemerges, and we have this interkinesis or the splitting of two cells. 
So again, we started with one cell that had 46. We copied everything to 96. Now we're going to do what? We're going to split into two cells that have 46 and 46. Now we have 46 here and 46 here. What do we need to do again? We need to now do meiosis 2 or our second division. So now the chromosomes, sometimes they'll say the sister chromosomes. So how do we know the difference? These are sister chromatids, right? We don't have homologs now. We don't have four. We only have our sister chromatids. They line up, and then they're going to split, and they're going to move to the opposite poles by the kinetic cores in anaphase two. And then in telophase, we're going to have the nuclear envelope reappear, the spindles disappear, and we're going to see the splitting of the cell. Depending if it's an, a plant or animal cell, we're going to see either a cleavage furrow or a cell plate, and now we're going to end up with four cells. So again, remember, we started with 46. What are we eventually going to do? We're going to turn into two cells from each 46, but they're going to have 23 apiece. Life cycle. There's asexual, asexual reproduction and sexual reproduction. So I just want to make sure that we at least know the difference. When we talk about meiosis, this is where we're talking about sexual reproduction requires two parents. The life cycle involves meiosis and mitosis, meaning, remember, mitosis is how you go from a, an egg, sperm, or fertilized egg. You go from that to an adult. Meiosis is how an adult makes egg, and sperm. Asexual reproduction, there's only one parent and the offspring are identical. So something I should mention, I guess since I talked about it down here, in meiosis, adults make egg and sperm. So meiosis is only happening in the ovaries and the testes. And we'll see this in just a moment when we get to 36. All right, be able to compare meiosis to mitosis. So here is meiosis one, here's meiosis two, now here's mitosis. So this is a nice uh, chart that they put in the book or, the, or a figure. Please take a look at it and tell the differences between the two. Some chromosome anomalies that we should mention that can happen. This is called a non-disjunction event. So basically, um, if the cell in the middle of division has an error and it doesn't get um, identified, you can have chromosome, chromosomal abnormalities. So non-disjunction event is some event during meiosis one or two in which the cells do not split properly. So what's supposed to happen to the pair of homologs, right? The pair of homologs are supposed to get evenly distributed. Do you see how in meiosis one, this egg received none, and this received two copies. Four altogether, but two double copies. So now these do split. So now this egg, we'll say, has two chromosomes from mom, and then the sperm brings one for dad. This egg, if it becomes fertilized, now has three chromosomes. We're only supposed to have two of every kind, and now we'll have three. Have you ever heard of trisomy? or Down syndrome. That means that this person has three chromosomes and it's chromosome number 21, and it causes some problems. You can see these eggs have no chromosomes. They only end up with dad, so they only end up with one chromosome each. Again, that's gonna cause some problems. So that was a non-disjunction event that occurred in meiosis one. Well, a non-disjunction event can also occur in meiosis two. So the first division happened fine, but the second division there was a problem and this egg did not receive any chromosomes. So now we have two that are healthy, two normal. We have one that has an extra chromosome and one that doesn't have enough chromosomes. So you can see that a non-disjunction event in meiosis two is a little bit better because at least your odds are 50-50. Whereas a non-disjunction event in meiosis one, all four of the cells were non-functional. All right, I'll see you for the next chapter.